So this is the third and last um, video about our trip from the Alps to the beaches in a camper van. Um, and I have some concluding thoughts uh, in case any of you are contemplating a, a camper van rental or trip in France or Europe for that matter. Uh, the town towns along the beach of the Atlantic coast uh, in the summer are uh, very touristy. Everybody in these towns is there on vacation. The town populations uh, grow a hundredfold in July and August. It's a festive, even carnival-like atm atmosphere, which um, when I'm on vacation, I, I actually like that. So, uh, especially with kids, uh, I think it, pro it provides them a lot of activities. Um, if you're looking for a a more quiet um, kind of nature atmosphere, uh, I, I have seen some fantastic cape campgrounds um, along lakes and in the mountains, um, especially here in this region. So that's something you might contemplate. Um, some great fishing, uh, trout fishing and bass fishing as well. Make sure you get a, a fishing license though before you go fishing. Um, the camper van we had was a Renault. Uh, it was called a Renault Burstner, I believe. I think Burstner may refer to the people who converted into a camper van. Um, and the good, let me see, the good, I had some good and bad on it. Uh, the gas mileage was surprisingly good. I can't tell you exactly what it was, but it didn't cost me as much in gas as I thought. The stove was very effective. The sleeping was more ample and spacious than I expected for four people. Although that's two people in a sort of queen or double sized bed and two other people in a similar sized bed. Um, it came with a bike rack, no extra charge that uh, you could uh, put two bikes in. The bikes were invaluable. Having bikes with us uh, just opened up a world for us because you know when you're in a camping campsite, you don't you don't want to give up your spot to go touring around in the camper van. So you're either limited to what you can reach by foot, or and you, if you want to extend that range, bikes are a great way to do it. Um, the camper van came equipped with some camping like chairs and. A, a table that you could set up outside underneath the awning. Uh, nevertheless, we found it helpful to bring a couple of extra chairs. We even brought an extra table, but we didn't need to use that. A um, couple of things that the van lacked, uh, which we thought, uh, or areas in which it was lacking, uh, the back seat for the two boys was just too small and uncomfortable. It didn't recline. It, push them too close. It just really wasn't fit for the purpose of long distance traveling. Um, we noticed that a lot of the other campers had uh, kind of tire blocks, tire chocks, I think they're called, that uh, they used as levelers to get their van level when they were the, 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 site, the spots for the camper vans often aren't, generally aren't completely level. So it's good to have that so you're not rolling over the person you sleep with that all night um and uh what else oh um you know the electrical cord was pretty long nevertheless uh a lot of the little stations where you plug into are in the summer um uh, uh everybody's plugged in so you, you need to bring a a little power strip and an adapter Although our camper van came with an adapter, it didn't come with a power strip or a, a splitter of some sort, type because most people needed that to uh, plug into the stations because there were just too many people plugging in. Um, so we, we ended up buying one at the store and that, uh, that was a lifesaver. Let me see, uh, the van itself was manual. Um, in other words, stick shift. Uh, I don't recall an option for automatic. I'm sure a lot of the places have automatics, but if you're uh, if they're rented out, you may only be left with a manual. Um, so that yeah, that's fine for you know as far as I'm concerned, manual is fine. Um, France doesn't do a lot of enforcement by police car. 
but they do do a lot of enforcement of traffic rules by um, camera and radar and usually there's a sign posted uh, in places that are radar slash camera controlled and uh, you can be certain um, that uh, they will have that there and um, if you are caught speeding it will find you um, as it has done me on practically every <laughs> every road trip a uh, vacation road trip I've taken and uh, the auto routes which you know are equivalent to uh, California or US tollways um, have uh, sort of mysterious slow down spots that often aren't well posted um, and you will go from uh, 130 kilometers speed limit to 90 kilometers and um, it's easy to miss that uh, signpost so be aware of that um, and let me see uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, speed trap signs Oh, the and the camera, little camera stations are usually in a, like a gray column or a gray box, and then they have like yellow, looks like tape, almost like that emergency tape, yellow and black, around the the camera itself. Uh, let me see. And that uh, that about covers it. Um, and so, without further ado, we'll roll the film. We keep saying it. You just couldn't get this in Southern California. Wide open beaches, wide open coast, undeveloped coast, stretches of undeveloped coast. And what else? Oh, <laughs> property, you know. In the apartments, uh, condos as you'd call them in the U.S. In the uh, 150 to 350 range. Alright. This is what I'm talking about. And the, it is high season for the beaches of August. in the lovely summers. We come to a crossroads. What's it say over there? I can't read that shit. Oh, that's an observatoire. Observatoire? And this is... Let's go to the observatoire. Come on, man. Come on. It's a Taj. Well, the, what they would do, they'd get on there and they'd run really fast. <laughs> but that's still good. That's but I mean, it wasn't that bad at balance. So it was some like weird little kid thing where they would. Do, do uh, Lynn, because I already got Ernie doing that. Lots, where he was really doing it. Not like, in, not in 4K, you didn't. Ooh, okay. Look at that that's form. Good, Thing used to be red. Yeah. It's like a big light red. Right. Here we are, a little bit more Liettes, near the Courant de Uche. Don't rely on my pronunciation. And the surf is cleaned up enough to be surfable now and uh, beaches are wide open big spacious and even though it seems like it's crowded what I hear is that first of all it's just crowded here there's miles and miles of undeveloped beach um, and then the other thing is it's like two months out of the year and the rest of the year is pretty empty that's kind of cool. The surfers wading across the uh, little river mouth there. Two most amazing beaches 
I have never seen are in France. And they are? Molietsema. Where we are now. Right near the uh, Courant de Uche, if I have that right. And the other one, oh shit, what was that called? <laughs> Damn. Do it? No. All right, I just remember the uh, the Kalank, C A L A N Q U E S, the in uh, the plages, the beaches of the Kalank National Parks near Marseille on the Mediterranean was the other one. Both were the most beautiful beaches I've ever seen, despite having traveled numerous surf destinations: Fiji, Bali. New Zealand, Australia, Mexico, both the Baja Peninsula and mainland Mexico. For a view of it looking less crowded, see our earlier video when we visited Mimi's own plage and took a jaunt down here. Vilo. Un moment, s'il vous plaît. So, uh, France doing a bit of its own suburban sprawl. <laughs> Actually, we went through some more uh, more American style stuff a little while ago. Cool lakes all over the place. So close to the ocean. So Moliets is basically a cork tree forest. <laughs> I guess they're cork oaks. And uh, now we know where our wine bottle caps come from. <laughs> right. On the road again, on the way back home, driving through the countryside, which is pretty much the rule here in France. Whenever you're driving, you're usually driving in the countryside. Here we are making a pit stop on the way back to Grenoble. We're breaking it up into a two day drive. Uh, so since we didn't really leave the campground until, what, I don't know, 1 p.m. or something. So yeah, it makes it a little easier, a little less hectic. There's Spikey always robbing my, my seat <laughs> the second I leave. <laughs> hey buddy. I knew it. We can quite distinguish with that gray uh, goatee. Hi. Are you in my seat again? Ah. What are you doing? There's my handsome son. I <laughs> caught him in the picture too. <laughs> Just missing one. There he is. Meters at the roundabout. Oh, my second. tips, y'all! You put your hand on it, you suck it to the mother. When you say goodbye, okay, I'll see it. There you go. We are staying in a campground in the country. And. There's this automated pizza and burger station here. Artisanal pizza, it claims. And drinks. But I'm not seeing any hot, hot coffee, which is what I was hoping for. Fabrication Maison Base de Produits Regionaux. Wow. Wow. That's all I am getting. You didn't get the valley down below or the bridge? No, because all you get is bridge. Yeah. And we had passed. Oh, it's so pretty. The sky is so blue. And the clouds. Un or un in front of it when it is in, when it's singular. Here we are at another one of their excellent, one of France's excellent auto route 
rust stops, refueling stops, everything you need stops. Modern, clean. We are back home, entering the Grenoble zone. Presenting a positive vision there for the future. There we are. Back home. In our little Grenoble sign.